Um, we're going to start on the defensive side tonight, but I think you're right when you talk about how the scheme kind of put, I, I call it like a, a, a rev limiter on Josh Allen. They kind of capped him out based on the scheme, based on the concepts that they put in, uh, especially early in the game and didn't allow him to get into that hero ball mode. They did some things with the scheme, the run game, some of the shorter passes, like we're going to talk about uh, to, to keep the game in front of him, to stay ahead of the chains. And, you know, it helped him it limit those turnovers that we saw in week one. And when we get to that area, we're going to talk about some of the stats, not just from the Raiders game, but uh, Josh overall, he's, he's lighting it up uh, aside from those turnovers. He's, he's really lighting up and we're talking mm -hmm. the past game, but let's start on the defensive side of the ball, because as we said, the, uh, the Raiders offense, you know, they're very one dimensional. Like I, I respect, and, and many guys across the NFL respect Jimmy G for what he can do how he can lead a team and how he wins. He wins mm -hmm. in a certain way, but it, when you get behind, you know, it's tough for a guy like him to come back and win games. So they, the bills went into this, you know, game and matchup with the idea to shut down Josh Jacobs and boy, did they ever Anthony. Bro, they, I just, I was a little nervous coming into the Raiders game from that perspective of, you know, they, they, they just want to stay on schedule with their run game. And then they go 21 personnel, and they're one of the few teams that are like a true 21 true. personnel with Jakob Johnson, who's six foot three, 255 pound fullback. Like he's your old school um, Sam Gash type of Lorenzo Neal, like your dad's kind of fullback who is mm -hmm. just a masher. And we saw in week one against the Jets, when the Jets went heavier, the Bills put Taylor Rapp in, and it did not work out. And the Bills chose to stay in nickel this week against the Raiders when they were in 21. And not only when the Raiders were in 21, but while the Raiders were in 21 with an extra offensive lineman on the right. field. So they'd have six and, offensive. Go ahead. And and they weren't like bringing these big guys in to spread them mm -hmm. out and get the Bills in the base defense. No, they were like, we're coming downhill. We're running power eye, eye formation, you know wham type plays just coming downhill at the defense and yeah. you know it's one of the things that we always talk about this bill's defense they're built to defend the pass they're mm -hmm. lighter especially you know at that second level and you know what they freaking took it to them and i think it started up front though let's start up front oh, because yeah. most of the stars of the defensive side of the ball started up front ed oliver first play dude, of the game first dude play of the is game. playing lights out right now you know people were worried about him after getting his contract don't be worried the boy <laughs> is balling right now um you know daquan jones obviously daquan he just always shows up at nose oh, tackle yeah. Oh, yeah. um and, and rousseau as well you know just defending the run those three guys were the premier like standouts from this game but ed oliver probably the star of the game if we're talking on the defensive side of the ball he's just continued that that strong play that we've seen flashes of at times um, throughout his tenure with the Buffalo Bills. And that conversation was always from everybody. Like everybody and their mother was always like, man, if Ed Oliver could just be a little more consistent. Um, and just what he's done this year, you know, out of, out of 233 qualifying edges and interior defensive linemen, um, Ed Oliver is 13th in pass rush productivity. Fun fact, Leonard Floyd is 18th, but just what he's done against the pass. And then Eric, you have this queued up from PFF here from a run defense standpoint, um, just the total stops, but the stop percentage just consistently penetrating. He's also winning against double teams. Like he's affecting right. the run and the pass. And like you said, you know, as we get into more of the conversation here, when you're stopping the run that successfully, especially against a power team, like the Raiders, it starts up front. Yeah. And this is only from week two. So you can see it. Against the run only, he had three tackles, three stops, a stop percentage of 42.9. His average depth of tackle in this game was a tackle for loss. It was negative 0.7. Like, that's ridiculous. You see, I, I talked about Bernard. We're going to talk about him. We're going to show some of his film. He also had a very good game against the run, triggering downhill, very instinctive, uh, playing off the defensive tackles, um, as we'll, you'll see in some of the film. Uh, Rousseau's right there as well. One stop against, or one tackle against the run one run stop, but I want to say Daquan Jones, uh, you know, I know he's down the list a little bit there, but what he did against the Raiders isn't going to show up on the, in the box score a lot. But if you go back and watch that film and how, when he realized that the Raiders were coming downhill in those a and B gaps, he was gap exchanging. He was slanting, occupying two with, you know, by penetrating quickly, 
on the interception for, uh, by Bernard. Yes, thank he you. Sh he shot up field and got Jimmy G uncomfortable and kind of fading back the, a little. The, 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 the defense than was the defense was beat again on that screen. Yeah. Daquan oh, heated him up. That would have been big. Happen. Yep, that would have been huge. So Daquan was the first guy to pressure. Then obviously uh, Rousseau's hands get up. He tips it. It ends up in Bernard's hands. So. Uh, I do think Daquan, like go, go back and watch guys. Like he stood out like crazy and it's a lot of things that's not going to show up on this screen. He is the king of that, that kind of like unsung, unheralded hero type. And, you know, we, we banged the drum for him last year, you know, having him on the show, we had him on the show because of how strong his play was on the field. And I think he, again, we, we've said this line so many times, like I think Bills fans realized his importance when he was out for that game against Cincinnati. And it just drastically changed the interior of what the Bills defense was. And he showed up big time in this game, eating double teams, uh, dropping the knee, just penetrating, mm -hmm. causing havoc, gumming up the works on the, on the interior. And it was the reason, you know, part of the reason why you got to see, you know, Matt Milano coming downhill and, and filling against Jakob Johnson and watching Taron Johnson shoot or Bernard shoot. Like it was, it was a concerted effort against the run from a numbers perspective, from a physicality perspective, from an effort perspective. And it was just a really, you know, we talk about it all the time, like run fits are scientific or it takes everybody doing their one eleventh. and the bills defense as a run defense unit on almost every rep against the Raiders, it was everybody doing their one eleventh, and you have to do that when you are in nickel and Taron Johnson's on the field and one of your linebackers is Terrell Bernard. You're significantly undersized mm -hmm. and you're going up against a 255 pound fullback and a sixth offensive lineman from a size perspective. You're outmanned and you're outgunned. So the way you win is with proper gap integrity or having numbers and committing and being gapped out. The Bills did that on a ton of these reps and they succeeded individually and holistically as a team. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that Bills did early, again, they sold out. They they sent a lot of run blitzes, and mm -hmm. you're going to see some of those in the film later where they're slanting the DN, they're slanting the D tackle, they're bringing a safety off the edge or a linebacker or, or a nickel. They did a lot of those run blitzes where it gummed things up and allowed you know someone to shoot a gap, someone to come free and make the mm -hmm. tackle. But when it came to Ed Oliver, he wasn't making his run stops in that fashion. He was just straight up bullying dudes into the backfield using power. And so now if we look at some of Ed Oliver's stats so, so far against the run this year, and this, again, we have to keep in mind, you know, in prior years with Ed Oliver, a, a lot of early downs, they would bring him out. Mm -hmm. They would bring him out. A lot of his, when he would come off the field, it was usually on run downs and they put a little more beef in there uh, to not just uh, help out the defensive line, give him a blow, but because they wanted to help the linebackers at the second level this year. That's not happening, and he's blowing things up. You see six solo tackles against the run. His run stop percentage of 17.9 in the first two weeks is ranked fourth behind Quinn and Williams. Like, mm. again, he is taking his game to the next level, and we're not even talking about the pass rush game, which he's being super disruptive in that manner too. But his power and ability to control the line of scrimmage at the point of attack has really stood out the first two weeks. Yeah, you know, we, we've we seen him a lot of times when he's flashing. It's that quickness. It's that penetration. It's him one-gapping and getting upfield. But I, I like the verbiage that you use there just now. Like, we're seeing him stronger at the point of attack, whether it's against double teams or just individual base, base blocks or, mm -hmm. you know, guards trying to reach him. Like, the physicality, the hand placement, the usage, the, the stacking and shedding. Like, he's just... He's added that piece to his game. So he's not just this fly up the field and make a play or leave a huge gap and get run through like what happened against the Indianapolis Colts in the regular season a couple years ago. We're seeing stronger play at the point of attack. And Eric, that's what this Bills team needs in order to help these linebackers start to take advantage of their speed and processing. You got to keep them clean. And Ed's done it in a variety of ways, either with penetration or staying strong at the point of attack. Yeah, and, and talk about setting the tone, right? And then unfortunately, this drive <laughs> uh, was not a good drive. It ended up, you know, with a touchdown with the Raiders. But the first play of the game to come out against uh, Greg uh, Van Roten, Van Rotten, some of my coworkers call him Van Rotten. Um, I mean, he should, Ed Oliver should win this route, and he does. He just gets under this dude's pads, pushes him back two, three yards. And, and you can see Jacobs trying to take that wide zone run there. He's just blown up by Ed Oliver at the point of attack. And this is exactly what you want to see from your defensive line where you've got four down and, you know, Bernard is kind of creeping in a little bit, but it's almost just like a five man box, you know, Hyde mm -hmm. comes down and spins down post snap, but Oliver gets underneath Van Roten drives him completely into the backfield. Like, and 
it's just it's chaos and disruption to the point that Jacobs has nothing to do. The timing is off. His track is off. Yeah. He has nowhere to go purely because of the get off, the leverage, and the burst. And you you see when Ed comes off, he dips under after he comes up, and he gets right underneath the pads of Van Roten, drives him back. I also like on this one, I mean, Ed makes the play, so no one else has the chance to. Rousseau coming off uh, the right edge there, mm -hmm. grabbing the wrist or the hand <laughs> clubbing it's him so, by bro it's so disrespectful like he pulls him through yeah clubs yeah. him and chucks him to the ground like <laughs> that's a that's a huge man at right tackle and Rousseau is just like get out of my way and he like throws him like your little brother yeah. is like like your little brother's on the couch and he's in your spot <laughs> so you just grab him you chuck him out like I was the little brother so that happened to me um this it's just good it's good run play from your defensive line. And we expect it from Rousseau at this point. He's been that way since his rookie year, but seeing Ed form function in this way, oof, it's, it's just another element to this defense. Yeah. And another element, uh, you know, to this defense, we're talking about, um, you know, the run blitzes that Love we're it. seeing on early downs. Now, and now the bills did run a lot of run blitzes under Leslie Frazier, but I feel like if it's first down and the offense is in a, a run type personnel or tendency, group they're gonna send a run blitz and so here you you could see um Rousseau and Daquan Jones slanting inside so you're seeing they're starting on the outside shoulder and then you see them slant inside so there's Daquan here comes Rousseau and they're bringing Poyer off the edge and again it just gums things up but watch what the guys in front of Milano again an undersized linebacker watch what the guys in front of him do Daquan Jones slants inside. Ed Oliver. Look at Ed Oliver's technique here. Beautiful. Drop that knee. Drop that near knee. Occupy those two guys. And what does that do? Look at Milano just hopping around like a baby deer. Just hopping <laughs> around. Staying clean. And Oliver gets off the block as well. And they meet at the ball carrier. Like, that is tremendous scheme, you know, by calling that run blitz. Yep. But then execution by the guys on the field of occupying and letting others do their job and do their 111. It's so pretty, like, because again, you have the individual execution tied into the design and the call. And anytime you can have your two interior defenders on the line gumming up the works and having two guys take up three, that's going to be a win because in this instance, it keeps Matt Milano clean. And just watching Ed, I love how he drops Amazing. that knee. Watching watching defensive tackles drop the knee is to me is just absolutely gorgeous. Like watching mm -hmm. them reduce that surface area and stay strong at the point of attack. Like so, we talked about earlier. Go ahead. Yeah. And we always talk about this. So if you guys are new to the film room, what that means is he recognizes. So at Oliver right here, he's recognizing that a combo blocks coming here. So there's two guys coming down on him. Usually when a combo block comes, one guy is the leverage. He's the hand leverage. That's usually this guy right here. And then the driver, we call this guy the driver because he wants to displace Ed Oliver in that direction. So Ed Oliver is taught, okay, when that driver is coming to hit you, you drop the near knee to anchor down. And then when that double team or combo block dissipates, usually one of those guys is going to the next level uh, in either direction. When that dissipates, that's when you come back up, you pop back up, and you see Daquan Jones' disruption right here. It kind of almost mm -hmm. takes that double team off of Ed, allows him to get free, and again, Ed Oliver and Milano are there in the hole. So that's what Anthony means uh, when he says dropping that near knee. He's getting that near knee down, uh, it, coming from that driver in that same, uh, same side of the ball there, and just, again, taking on that double team and then popping up and making that tackle. And it's beautiful. And the way he pops up, it's – it's almost like it's purposefully synchronized with Daquan slanting inside. It's almost mm -hmm. like they execute a little like twist just between the two of them. And that Ed scrapes over the top and he's clean. So you've got Ed dropping the knee, staying strong at the point of attack. You've got the quickness from Daquan getting penetration against um, his man and then messing up the double team on Ed. And then that's the mm -hmm. last piece for me. Taryn Johnson, Taren. who... I feel like he just he thinks that he's six foot three, two forty. Like <laughs> yeah, that's right? the way he plays the run. Like, dude Boy, is just lying. One thousand miles per hour against the run. And look you at highlighted that. everybody else. The look gap the integrity. Pit. Boom. You're gapped out. Everyone's and selling out. There you go. You're good to go. And it's an if it's we we didn't see some instances of this in week one. We saw at times where the bills were out gapped instead of mm -hmm. being gapped out, and they were at a disadvantage from the get-go before the rep even happened. This week, we saw more of a commitment to stopping the run. And again, this is one of those examples that I talked about earlier. The Raiders have their true fullback, Jakob Johnson, on the field, and they have a sixth offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And the Bills are sitting here like, so even if they are gapped out, they're gapped out with Taron Johnson and Terrell Bernard and a smaller, you know, uh, three tech and Ed Oliver. So that means you have to win with, we have to win and play to your strengths. You have to win with that burst and that tenacity and that go forward combined with the scheme. And that's the reason they were able to win here. And this is, this is just a complete win across the board from an individual and schematic level. It's beautiful. And you see this kind of rep time and time again in this game. Yeah, it was uh, awesome to see. And here's another play by Oliver at the line of scrimmage. Watch him at the point of attack. Again, point of attack, he is right over here. And then you're getting that that slant again, that run blitz. Daquan across the face, Shaq Lawson across the face, Jordan Poyer off the edge. Poyer is the one that makes a tackle down the line of scrimmage. But again, look mm -hmm. at wh where is he supposed to go? Uh, you know, where is Jacob supposed to go on this play? Look at Ed Oliver. I mean, he is taking Van Roten to the woodshed on this play, just <laughs> driving him back. Forcing Jacobs. Jacobs has to make a decision at this point. Do I stay outside or do I cut it back? Either way, it's not looking good on either of those options. And so Oliver pushes him back, make makes him bubble outside a little bit. And then he, you know, Jacobs is trying to find a little crease inside here, but there's just nowhere to go. And uh, I think it's Benford that's mm -hmm. you know kind of sifting through the traffic there. Poyer's coming from the backside. I also like Bernard. It's one thing I have noticed with Bernard. I like the way he feels cutback lanes. Mm -hmm. You can see him. He's like, everyone's getting washed this way. Why would I continue, you know, scraping that way? I'm going to cut up inside and try to find that cutback lane. Does he make the tackle? No. But if Jacobs were to get up inside here, this fullback's kicking out Benford. Guess who would be right there? You know, they would both be right there to make the tackle. Again, just great run defense by mm -hmm. the Bills. Sean McDermott and the Bills defense sold out to stop Jacobs. And that's why he ended with negative two yards on the day. Absolutely wild for, for the leading rusher in the NFL last year who dominated in Josh Jacobs. I love your point there with Benford because it's really easy to just kind of flow too much over the top. And that's how you get two guys in the same gap. And all of a sudden that cutback is there, mm -hmm. but the bills maintain here and you're highlighting so many of my favorite pieces. You get that edge setting presence from Greg Rousseau. He, he uses his length. A lot. Jesus. But, look at, I mean, look at the control. Look at the hand all, control. Look at wrist control right there. Like, oh, he, he set that edge perfectly. Yes. Get, he establishes first contact and then he, he uses his length in a variety of ways, but you see it so much in the run when he sets the edge. Like, he just gets his hands into the chest plate of the tackle and is just completely controlling him. And then boom, like I highlighted again, that's a an sixth line. offensive that's lineman end. there. Nope. So he's not just owning a tight end. He's owning their sixth offensive lineman, completely sets the edge, forces Jakob Johnson to have to put his foot in the ground and cut it up as the lead blocker for um, Jacobs. Mm -hmm. There's the alley. There's nowhere to go. Like on this zone run, the play is already almost destroyed because Van Roten gets knocked off the plane with the rest of his linemen. So, intensely that like you said Jacobs has to bubble out and that's mm -hmm. not his strong suit so Ed disrupts this play and then Benford yeah really great piece like from you know the guy who was the dark horse to win the corner two spot and you know he's had some good run defense reps in the preseason to start this year like watching him sift through the traffic and get his shoulder pads and his eyes to the ball and making a play here as Poyer chases it down and Benford gets a piece again there's like if we wanted to focus on just one person we could but there's like six really quality reps in here in a, a lot of wins yes a ton of wins and they're winning schematically but they're also winning individually and those are you can win either way in the nfl you can win with scheme or you can win with individual execution when it came to the run defense in this game for the bills they won in both ways and that's pure dominance yeah it was good stuff we got one more play here um against uh, for the defense here so this is the last play um but again the it starts up front daquan jones and then you have Terrell Bernard sifting through the traffic and making the tackle, but you have a nice edge set so that that running back can't bounce it. Again, the bills were selling out. So watch on the snap, watch Daquan Jones and how he slants into that a gap. And this guy's like, Oh, perfect. You know, we're trying to run a lead play, you know, to his side. And what is, what is uh, the offensive lineman do? He's like, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll slide this guy out and no problem. That's fine. You know, Daquan Jones is a little out of his gap. He's kind of upfield now. Well, that's, it's up to the linebackers to play off of that. It's up to the guys behind in the playoff. That, and that's what Bernard does here perfectly. Mm -hmm. I just love how he comes downhill, plays off of Daquan Jones, and he's he's clean, obviously, and he just makes a tackle. This dude, he's been impressive. You know, I, I'm a sucker for linebackers. I'll put that <laughs> out there. I love linebackers. I love most linebackers. Um, but 
I just like when it, it just, I feel like there's so many good athletes at the position and they have to process on the fly so much quicker than other guys, you know, cause they're in the box that often. And they have to play off of guys like Daquan Jones here where there's a gap there and easily, you know, Bernard could have just stayed in that, you know, backside a gap waited to that where that running back was. And then Jacobs maybe cuts it up inside and gets, mm-hmm. you know, blows by him, but he came downhill made the stop. And he, I think he's just been really impressive especially when we're talking against the run game, he comes downhill, he fires his gun and he makes the tackle. Yeah. He's had a couple of really good run defense reps these first two weeks where he sees it and he quick triggers and gets downhill and closes. And, you know, again, like the, the coordinated dance that is run defense. Sometimes your job isn't to be the guy to make the tackle. Like sometimes you are that force player, you are that spill player. And I, You know, you highlighted Bernard, you highlighted Daquan Jones. I also like how Poyer spins down Mm -hmm. and he attacks that outside shoulder of Jakob Johnson because he knows he's got Milano inside him, but then also Bernard is coming free. And then Leonard Floyd on the outside, just playing responsible against Colton Miller. He stays clean. He gets his... Uh, hands into the chest of Miller, but he's he's got him at a distance in case Jacobs bounce, bounces that outside because yeah. he knows he's that force player, so he's got his responsibility. And then, boom, there you go with the lines. Like, they are in their gaps. You can't really see Bernard, but he's shooting through, and you got him highlighted with the yeah. line. Like, everybody's in their gap responsible for what they are responsible for, and that's how you play run defense. Sometimes you just have a game record, like Ed Oliver's done it at times in this game, but, or, you know, Aaron Donald for years where, oh, This guy just made a play in a half a second and the run is blown up. But a lot of times it takes a coordinated effort and that's what you got on this play. So Bernard makes it and it's great on him, but I also love what Poyer and Floyd did in addition to Bernard and Daquan Jones. Yeah. And so far, you know, for Terrell Bernard against the run, since we're looking at some of these run plays, um, he's actually been really good against run. He's put up a bunch of tackles too, which is kind of surprising, you know, through two games Um, right now he has four solo tackles versus the run six assisted tackles, only missed one tackle so far, four run stops. That's a run stop percentage of 10.8. And his average depth of tackle is 0.8. So not even a yard. Mm -hmm. So he's playing at or near the line of scrimmage against the run, not, you know, wasting a lot of time. I know a lot of people look at him and say, and we we're, we're in the same boat. When we saw him at training camp, we're like, God, he's like, Mm -hmm. you put him next to Saran Neal and the, the, the DBs and he fits right in. You put him next to the linebackers like, gosh, man. And then he wears number 43, which is kind of odd. Yeah. You know, it, it, that's that's one thing I will request from Bernard is to change his number next year. But I don't like um, the, I, I didn't like Edmonds with 49. I don't like Bernard with the 43. It's I a like huge Palomalu. I like the player, but I don't that's like fair. it at linebacker. And it just no. it's you got to change your number, brother. Yeah, I just <laughs> if you want if you want to take that next step as a player in this league, you got to have some respect for yourself and just get a better number. Um, but it, yeah, it, it's been we talked about him in the off season is kind of being our preference at the linebacker spot because of the multitude of things he does um, from a pass coverage standpoint mixed with the run. But the one thing we always connected with Bernard was how he plays from the neck up and, Mm -hmm. you know, mentally. And a lot of the reason he's succeeding for me, at least it's just because of how well he processes his ability to diagnose accurately and efficiently. And that's something that goes back to his time at Baylor with Dave Aranda and what McDermott said about him in camp last year, what Frazier said about him. Like he's such a smart, heady player and you see it with his ability ability to diagnose and figure out where he needs to fit to make plays. Yeah. And Pete says, if we're going to say the Raiders are terrible, then take that with a grain of salt. Of course, everything we say tonight is with a grain of salt Hmm. because again, we, I don't think the Raiders are that good a team, but for over the first two weeks for Bernard to play the run this well, a guy that everyone talked about is being undersized and he can't stop the run. That's why we're highlighting it. We're showing you that he actually is performing. And for, uh, I, I remember I sent this out, this tweet out, about Edmonton threw <laughs> two games last year and Bernard threw two games this year. And I'm like, Anthony, I'm going to have to mute this one immediately. Cause I know it's going to bring out a lot of haters and it, it didn't did. go, it, it didn't go unnoticed. <laughs> no, it did not go unnoticed. And so uh, if you're looking at some of these stats through the first two games of 2022 Edmonds versus the run, he had three solo tackles, zero assisted, had three run stops and 8.8 run stop percentage, S- similar average depth of tackle of 0.7. Um, whereas again, Bernard had, he accumulated more tackles and he has a higher run stop percentage. So again, this is not to draw any conclusions at all. As someone has said on Twitter, Oh, you're, you're drawing conclusions <laughs> off a two game sample. No, I actually didn't draw any conclusions. As yes. you can see, I just showed their stats. <laughs> There's no conclusions being made. I just wanted to see how they both fared because both of them saw in the first two games of each season, 
saw the same number of run defensive snaps. So I want to mm. see, you know, where they stood and, and, you know, is there a drop off, especially when you're talking to some of the teams that they played and how they're going to lean on the run. Yeah. So right now, it, again, I think Bernard, he's looked solid. I think he's looked very solid. I thought in this game, when it, in, in coverage, I thought the things that we kind of talked about as pluses last week where he kind of senses routes going in behind him and crossing and reads the quarterback's mm-hmm. eyes. Lets his, the quarterback takes his eyes to the ball in, in, in pass coverage when he's in zone coverage. I felt like in this game, he was kind of overdoing it in that regard, and Jimmy G would be looking off to the right side of the field, and Bernard would drift. And it's like, dude, you're in cover three. You got to stay in, in that you know in that middle area. Like, what are you doing? Stay in your mm-hmm. hook to curl area. And he was drifting, and it was opening up. It opened up a check down to Jacobs. Um, it opened up um, Hunter Renfro on a deep crossing route, but Jimmy yes. G didn't see him several times. Actually, I'll say that several times. I was gonna, I literally had Renfro could have had a big game. Yeah, I was going to say I have in my notes like one of the detracting, not detracting pieces for the Bills defense, but one of like the cons or stock down pieces for me were that there were guys, mainly Hunter Renfro, running open in that middle of the field against several cover mm-hmm. two looks, one cover four look, and Jimmy G just didn't hit him. Um, no. And those are those are opportunities that I think. Because uh, Jimmy G's efficient, but more he doesn't more, like the middle though. He doesn't correct. like the middle of the field. No. So like more, I, I don't want to say mm. like non risk averse quarterbacks, but quarterbacks who will pepper that middle of the field like will recognize that. And I think that's an area to test. Like Bernard is Bernard and Benford are the two mm. like new guys on the defense. Like they're going to get tested at some point regularly with the with the pass coverage pieces. And it's nice to see Bernard succeed. But I love that you said that. I didn't want to drill too hard, but yeah, there were times where I was like, oh my god, like. So and so was wide open. Ironically, Renfro a bunch, and I was just like, "Where is Jimmy?" A couple times there was some pressure, and Jimmy couldn't see it. Um, and right. then Jimmy, you know, moved Bernard on a really Bernard and Hyde on a really good rep on a long third down completion to Devonte Adams that I liked. But then there were other times, yeah, where he had Renfro or other guys running in the middle, mm-hmm. and he just didn't and get I, to him. And that's an area that they got to clean up. Right, and it's again, it's a good and a bad thing. As as we said last week, and when I broke him down um, so, by myself. I said that, hey, you know, he he plays that vision-based scheme very mm-hmm. well. He reads mm-hmm. the quarterback. Well, good quarterbacks are going to use that against him. Good quarterbacks gonna are going to use their eyes to manipulate him, yeah. get him to drift, and then all of a sudden now that opens up the seam or that opens up the middle of the field even more. So it's something to keep an eye on because, you know, again, that may be a strength of his, how he trusts his eyes, right? That's a great thing. Mm-hmm. That's a great instinct mm-hmm. to have. But good quarterbacks will move you. When, if you trust your eyes that much, if you're not um, playing within the structure of the play and also reading your keys, if you're just reading him and you're not reading or feeling the routes behind you or going in through your zone, especially in zone coverage, then mm-hmm. those good quarterbacks are going to take advantage of you. But overall, man, yeah. the defensive side of the ball was quite impressive. Again, Raiders are one-dimensional, so keep that you know in mind uh, when you go back and watch it and when you're talking about this game. But I thought, they did a great job on the defensive side of the ball. The staff did a great job of, you know, again, calling some timely run blitzes to shut down Jacobs, not allow them, aside from that first drive, not allow them to get a, and stay ahead of the chains, which can get the Bills in trouble because then, again, they start to maybe McDermott gets a little too aggressive and then those big plays happen. It almost happened. That Bernard mm-hmm. interception, that screen – that was, that was really the turning point of this game, I think. That that mm-hmm. was a huge play by Rousseau and Bernard. Yeah, and, and and it set the Bills up immediately almost, I think, like the 30-yard line roughly led to a touchdown for him. And, yeah, it came after that first play for the Raiders was brutal with Ed Oliver, but then everything else, it's just Devontae Adams, and then it's a nice screen pass, and then it's a screen to Devontae for the touchdown. It was just like everything went by design the rest of that opening drive for the Raiders and they're up seven, nothing. And that's a game where, you know, this team trades away Darren Waller. They bring in Jacoby Myers who had a tremendous week one. He has that concussion. He's out. So this is a group that, yeah, they are one dimensional and they don't have a ton of studs. They do have Renfro, but Jimmy's not throwing him the ball. And this was it. This was a game where the bills defense had the opportunity to eat and to dominate. And the first drive was rough. Um, and they really kind of came through at the end and not really at the end, like after that first drive with the turnovers, the pressuring um, and really not allowing the Raiders any room to breathe, which is what they needed to do. Um, and, you know, Jimmy did have some opportunities, didn't get to him, but that's unfortunate. Um, 